You know, yeah. I'm in a rush, but I know you're gonna give me gold, Toby. Toby, you know you're at the Dakar win. I know that I'm at the Dakar what? Sorry? Win. Can you tell me? Give me a funny example. Oh, when? So I know, yeah. You know you're at the Dakar when? You know what number stage it is, but you certainly don't know what day it is. Then you're on the Dakar. That was actually really good. <laughs> Toby, why do we love this ridiculous race? Because it's the last of the wacky races. If you came up with the idea to run a Dakar through Saudi Arabia or Africa or South America and say, hey, I got this great idea. I want to run two and a half thousand people and how many teams and 409 cars and bikes and quads and trucks and everything, they'd say no, wouldn't they? <laughs> another January, another Dakar rally. After 12 stages, just to finish is an achievement. Survived. You're still here. I'm still here. Yeah, still kicking. Still working on my bike. We know what happened in the race. Let's look at why it matters. For Audi, it was only the first test, but one full of promise. For Seth Quintero, it was a chance to make history with 12 stage wins. You know what's gnarly is like I'm actually in history books now. Like that's that's mind blowing. For Chaleco Lopez, it's another trophy in the case. For Dmitry Sotnikov, it was a win for the team, leading the Blue Armada to the top three spots. For Nasser Al Atia, it's his fourth Dakar win but the first in his backyard. For Sam Sunderland, it was the chance to be a hero. Whether you're a race veteran or a brand new team, the Dakar is never easy. You're going to have to dig deeper than ever before. And when things go wrong, they can end like this. Rider, driver, or navigator. You may be part of a team, but in the desert, you're on your own. Some days, you might not know how you got here or how to get home. But in the end, it was all worth it. This, I don't know if you can call it a circus or what you can call it, but it's incredible. What happened, Andy, bro? Happy boy. <laughs> Why do we do it? Oh, that's a good one. Why do you love this race? Because it's dusty, it's dirty, and it's wild. Uh, it's a challenge. I mean, it's uh, completely crazy. You go long days, and it's tough for the teams, the drivers, the cars, everything. This is what we love. You know, it's the unknown. The, the sunset's the like that. <laughs> that was beautiful, Ross. <laughs> yeah, we saw, we see a lot of unexpected things. Woo! Put tents up, put tents down, trucks get unloaded, cars get repaired right through the night. That sound you're hearing now is you know that you're the Jackal. And you hear wah, 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 wah. Uh, The sound that puts you to sleep at night. <laughs> It's always a new experience here in the desert. Hot, it's cold, it can be wet. You have a good day, you jump off a dune, you crash in the dunes, you see camels, you you know, you get lost. You... Amazing experience, hot, everybody needs to be strong. I knocked the teeth out today on accident. I don't know how, why, I can tell you either. You want to come to the toughest race in the world and uh, definitely the Dakar lives up to its uh, expectations every time you come here. I think it's that unknown that makes it so appealing and so exciting and keeps bringing everyone back here. You have sucked in your of the purpose. And why do you love Dakar? I don't know. <laughs> because we hopefully win tomorrow, this is what we love.